Can you imagine defeating the all-powerful Roman Empire on their own turf, Italy? Spartacus accomplished this extraordinary feat from an extremely disadvantaged position, being nothing more than a slave. He gathered a group of escapees and slaves to take on the Roman army against all odds, winning one battle after another. Records and quotations from historians such as Plutarch and Apian of Alexandria indicate that Spartacus was most likely born in Thrace, a town to the north of Macedonian territory. Spartacus was a village in Thrace, and since it was common at the time for Roman slaves to be named after their origin, Spartacus was probably given this name once he became a gladiator. His real name, however, is unknown. People from Thrace were very much frowned upon by the Romans, as they considered all those who came from that region to be barbarians and not fit to live in an advanced society such as the Roman one. Nevertheless, Plutarch's descriptions show that Spartacus was not comparable to these Thracian stereotypes. The historian wrote that Spartacus was gifted with remarkable intelligence and acumen, as well as pointing out his extremely elevated level of culture. In Plutarch's own words, Spartacus was more Greek than Thracian. But this is where the story of Spartacus starts to blur, as there are no accurate and reliable records of his life in Thrace. Presumably, he started out as a shepherd, but in ancient Thrace this was hardly an easy job. He had to contend with wolves, bears, and bandits, which may have awakened in him the urge to fight. Spartacus therefore turned away from his beasts to become a soldier. The writings of Apian of Alexandria provide scant information, stating only that Spartacus was a Thracian who fought against the Romans at one point in his life and was then defeated, captured, and sold into slavery. On the other hand, if we look at the records left by the historian Publius Annius Florus, we are told that Spartacus was originally a Roman mercenary who served the Republic directly in some legions as an auxiliary soldier. Auxiliaries were non-Roman soldiers who used lighter weapons and fought together with the legions. If this were really the case, then it would explain how Spartacus gained a thorough knowledge of the Romans' warfare approach, which he used to devastating effect against them. Publius Florus described how Spartacus's service as a soldier was ruined at some point by accusations of desertion and theft, resulting in him becoming a slave and later a gladiator on account of his physical prowess. But Plutarch actually gives an account similar to that of Publius Florus, which may add weight to this account. Yet Plutarch adds a few more details. According to him, Spartacus was a soldier who fought for Rome's honor and glory, but who, at a certain point, for unknown reasons, defected. Interestingly, he wasn't caught alone, as the historian tells us that the Thracian warrior was with his wife when he was captured. He further describes this woman as a prophetess of the Thracian people. Spartacus, now a slave, found himself at the bottom tier of Roman society, as slaves often led deplorable lives. Most of these people, who ended up being taken to Rome after the campaigns in the 2nd and 1st centuries BC, were extremely useful to the Roman economy assigned to work in agriculture or mining in places like Sicily and southern Italy. Having grueling working hours, these people were handled very harshly. Under Roman law, a slave was a piece of property, not a person. Owners could abuse, injure, or even kill their slaves without legal consequences. Despite there being many levels and types of slaves, the lowest and most numerous, who worked in the fields and mines, were forced to undergo a life of hard physical labor. But the oppression that the Romans inflicted on these tens of thousands of slaves brought profound consequences. Between 135 and 104 BC, two major crises occurred in Rome due to its slaves. These were the First and Second Servile Wars, which mainly unfolded in Sicily. Weary of daily suffering and ongoing oppression, tens of thousands of slaves took it upon themselves to fight against Roman power. Both the First and Second Servile Wars were ultimately unsuccessful, as the rebels, despite being numerous, were poorly structured and had few chances of winning. And while the revolts brought problems for the Roman Republic, taking several years to be quelled finally, the Senate did not see these events as a threat. 
They believed that a professional and trained Roman army would never be defeated by a mob of rebellious slaves. This carefree attitude on the part of the Roman elites, meanwhile, would soon end when the Third Servile War began. Spartacus had all the hallmarks of a gladiator. He was a fierce fighter, adept with weapons, and, according to the law, was already sentenced to death. The people responsible for his capture decided to sell him as a gladiator, ready to thrill the crowds in the arenas. Spartacus and a group of men found themselves in Lentulus Batiatus's school, known for preparing gladiators for the performances put on for the people of Capua. Lentulus Batiatus was a well-known lanista in charge of training gladiators for arena battles. Spartacus and his companions were subjected to rigorous training, where they learned combat techniques and improved their skills. Still, Spartacus had much greater ambitions than simply making it through the gladiatorial rounds. He started to form a secret alliance among the other gladiators and persuaded around 200 of them to join together to defy Roman power and seek their freedom. The next video in this series will tell us more about this uprising that sparked the Third Roman Servile War. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any videos, and also like it if you enjoyed the content.